Show. It's the Zach Sang Show, and I'm very happy to have Lucas Graham in here. My very question off, my yeah. question <laughs> off of that is, how much of how much of your show is the power of the lyrics, and how much of it is the showmanship? You guys jumping up and down, taking your shirts off, putting on—I mean, almost like a rave. Almost, you're mm. feeling every bit of it. It's Rage Against the Machine performing <laughs> pop music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I would say the showmanship is a lot. I mean, because you can hear the songs on the radio and be touched, and you can hear the record at home and be touched by it. But you were at the Wilton show. You saw uh, us perform a mm, full 75 mm. minutes with our brass section. Like, and it was unbelievable. It, I mean, it, it changed my life. I, like, like that your, performance mom, your mom thought it was amazing. Yes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. By the way, you made my mom's year. You really did. You were the kindest, sweetest human being. And seeing her show, it put my career in a very different perspective for her, right? Because she's, she lives in New Jersey. She never comes out here. So she saw it differently. So I, I'm, a, I'm forever grateful for you for that moment. And you were very nice. Well, thank you very much. I, we, we appreciate uh, the, the talk we had with you when we left. We were mm. like, wow. Interviews can be fun, <laughs> yeah. and, and we don't say that to degrade every single interviewer across yeah. the globe because we do so many interviews and so many live sessions, and sometimes we're not the best. Mm. Yeah, I mean, um, but when you get asked questions that no one else has ever asked, or when you get asked questions like, "Oh, how much is the lyrics? How much is the showmanship?" That means you actually care about what we're doing. Yeah, and and sometimes we get the vibe that people are doing the interviews with us. It's very, very seldom this. Yeah. That the interview is being done because it has to be done. Someone is telling someone, oh, you should do an interview with these guys because they're popping right now. Mm -hmm. And then it's just hopping on a bandwagon and then it doesn't really work. <laughs> oh, so tell me about seven years. Listen to the lyrics. It's pretty <laughs> graphic. <laughs> that's, that, that's exactly yeah. It's literal. <laughs> and I feel like that's the worst prep of when they go to you and say, tell me about this song because you can listen to every song that you've put on that album. And it's a story. It's different tidbits of your life. And what I challenged myself in this interview to do <laughs> was to only prep based on the lyrics of your songs. Because I feel like that's the most accurate de description of who you are and what you stand for and where you plan on going. Well, see, if everyone who wanted to know anything about me and our music would just listen to the album and they wouldn't have to ask any questions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's true. Yeah. <laughs> no. Not a lot of people are lyricist and lyric minded. Yes. Um, like these two guys never really listened to lyrics, right? Never, never, never in my life. I think we played for a year and a half when both of them suddenly during a practice session, they're like... I, I think it was uh, under a concert, actually. In the middle of the concert, I just realized, okay, the lyrics are actually amazing here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but, but, but is that why you feel like everything kind of is on your shoulders? Because they do make up a great part of what Lucas Graham is and what you stand for, but you do feel the pressure of being the guy well i'm the man with the story um, yeah. yeah it's my story i'm writing about my dead father about my uh, unborn children about my dreams and ambitions for uh, world domination within the world of music <laughs> like take the world by storm and like we're being or i am being quite arrogant in some of the lyrics that i write and then we go on stage and it's all about love and compassion and companionship and brotherhood and uh, and but, yeah, it, it is weird and tough being the guy with yeah. the story because, I mean, Magnus can come up with the best bass riff ever or Mark can do the best drums ever. But if I don't write a story that's good mm. enough for the people who already follow us, I mean, people don't follow us because we're famous. People follow us because they feel something when they hear the music. Yes. And, and that does put a pressure on us that um, I feel it very, very seldomly, occasionally. I wrote two songs on the plane. Uh, was it yesterday we flew to Dallas? No, we flew to day? San Francisco. We flew to San Francisco yesterday. Uh. <laughs> okay, <laughs> cool. so it's <laughs> get a handle on it. It's because then we drove home, and I had I, we were home at eight. I had a nap <laughs> in the house, and then I realized, is it is it Friday? It's fr it's Friday today. It's Friday. Yes. Great. Right. Thank wow. you. <laughs> I got you. So this is our job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wrote two two uh, songs on the plane, and then. Um, and I was sitting there, and I then I go and show the manager some of the lyrics, and yeah. I read some of the lyrics to the guys, and everyone's like, "Oh, they're good lyrics." And I realize I have to actually go to Don Stefano, my main co-writer, before anyone is going to start pointing out what's wrong and what's not good enough yeah. yet. And it's a little annoying, but it's also cool. I mean, but, but 
Do you feel like your inspiration has changed? Because what's on your plate today is different than when you were writing this current album. I mean, I, mean, I was just bouncing dad. a baby up and down out in the street before coming in here because she was crying. <laughs> and, but what does that mean to you? I know it means the world. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, I've, I've always wanted to be a father, but I think we are all in the like in the we fit together very well as a team because we're all quite family orientated yeah we all have the dream of having kids and uh and i mean all the guys are great with my little daughter um except when she starts crying and magnus <laughs> like oh, i broke her Take <laughs> her. Oh, they dude, all just, run <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> then you realize oh i'm the dad i kind of have to stick around <laughs> to do this yeah <laughs> it's your responsibility but baby crying isn't as it's not that bad as soon as it's your own child and I, I was, yeah. I was so positively surprised about that. Um, and even some of my friends would say, "Oh, I never heard my friend's child cry before. It's not that bad." But when, when it's some person you don't know who has two children that are crying on, on the, the airplane, on the airplane, yeah. yeah. I've like because because baby crying never really got to me like that, but mm. I know that it does some people in the mix. <laughs> 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 but uh, the dad you are today. How would you describe it, right? Like, what? Tell me the stage of fatherhood that you're at. I'm hanging in there with my fingernails, <laughs> but I think that if if you're if you're a father and you have a nine week old baby and you don't feel like you're barely hanging in there, you're not trying hard enough. Yes. Um. I mean, I do my best to do the nappy changing and uh, burping and up at night and and help relieve uh, my my lovely girlfriend of the stress it is to be uh, the food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the food. <laughs> But at the end of the day, like half of the time, I can't do anything because I don't have food. Yeah. I, and she's only nine weeks old. She's not on uh, on any uh, like uh, what do you call like uh, supplement? No, milk she's not or formula or anything yeah. like that. No, it's just straight up breast milk. And, yeah. uh, and uh, it was a home birth as well. And, like very very hippie happy uh, Copenhagen uh, <laughs> style. Was she born in uh, Denmark? Yeah, she was born in uh, in my living room. Nice. Oh, wait, that's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, and the the two doulas we had were our two old roommates, uh, Sigurd and Morten, uh, two Jesus. strong men who helped carry everything around and make sure everything was ready. And we had a midwife come over and. Uh, and okay, what was that like for you? I mean, obviously you're crying. Obviously that you're there to for, support her. Forget about any drug you could ever con think of consuming, and then you're just sitting there for seven hours and seventeen minutes, going, "It's my fault." <laughs> <laughs> I I uh, I made I made this happen. <laughs> I am a bad person. Like I at one point I almost started crying and I realized if I started crying now like I, like that would make me the biggest like you're weak then. You can't uh, No no it, it's not about being weak yeah? because being weak in the end is being strong. Acknowledging yes. your weakness is knowing when to stop so you don't break. It was more that she's basically sitting there going Ugh. Yeah. <sighs> and you're like <laughs> trying to time it and you're like oh well uh. <laughs> and, and I'm realizing like okay if I start crying now I am the biggest jerk alive because <laughs> she's going through some pain yes, right now yeah, right. and she's not crying <laughs> <laughs> but You're like just I, watching but like I, um, the midwife looked at me once and was like do you need some air and i was like oh, yeah and i was like is that okay and she's like it's so okay yeah right <laughs> and i went out to the balcony i was like Whew, i called my manager because it was the middle of the night here yeah. i called casper here in la and i was like casper and he was like oh my god it's now isn't it i was like oh, it's it's now <laughs> and wow. i'm a uh, who and then I could hear, I could see that I had to go back in. And I was like, I, I gotta go. And he was like, okay, great. Um, I, w I won't, I'll cancel the next meeting. <laughs> Call me if you need to. And I was like, okay, uh, bye. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, wow. Do, how do you, do you now challenge yourself to take that moment and to translate that into something, into a song, into, I mean, how does that manifest, right? Because it lives within you. Yeah, but it, it, it it's as if, like I lost my grandfather, and then I lost a few friends, and, uh, and then I lost my father in 2012. And that was as if by the time my father died, I had lost enough people, and I had seen enough uh, evil in this world to write these very, you can say, heartfelt and diabolical songs. Yeah. It's my first child, and it's nothing that I was imagining it would be. So you're kind of dumbfounded and you're left naked yeah. in a sense. Like I have all this experience in performing and suddenly we went on stage. I'm getting a little, uh, not teary, but a, a little caught up here. Yeah. I, we, we were trying to practice a song and I had to stop. I was like, I, I can't sing this because I had written about being a father and now I was a father and I had to sing the songs for the first <laughs> time yeah. about before I was a father, dreaming of being a father. I was like, holy what <laughs> you're like yeah it's so strange uh, how does reality match what you dreamed of it doesn't 
but in a good way or a bad way? Yeah, it, it, it both. Yeah. yeah, because you you're not expecting the, that that you will sleep that little and it will uh, like affect you that little. Yes, I mean you suddenly had a week where you're like, okay, I slept. 16 hours in a week and you realize it doesn't really it doesn't matter it does not matter because at the end of the day there's this little baby and then you get after three four five weeks you get these smiles like <laughs> <laughs> or like the first time they smell something and they start seeing further and further yeah. or like right now she can see the color red so oh, red cool. things are like oh if she was here right now she'd be mad about the sock with the reindeer on it the other oh. ones would have been not be red enough oh. <laughs> like we, we just had lunch uh, and, and we got a rose with our chocolate mousse <laughs> and then going into the car she's just looking at the rose and I realized oh she can see colors that uh, imagine but, uh, like she can see colors now that's amazing that's uh, but but for you right like it, losing your dad losing your grandfather do you think about how you plan on explaining your dad to your daughter has that and because I know you've thought about it in the past when dreaming about kids, mm. now you have one. It's real. Well, um, I didn't know my own grandfather on my mother's side, uh -huh. um, but then again, my mother didn't really. They, she didn't have a good relationship with him, um, and and sh that's why she explains to me why I never asked. I'm like, but will will she ask about Eugene? Yeah, and my mom said, of course she will because you had a great relationship with your father, and you talk with your friends about your father and. I know a lot of people that don't talk about bad stuff that happened to them and they just, they're broken in yes. a way mm -hmm. where I am very uh, outspoken about the fact that I'm broken so I'm whole. Yeah, It's like a catch-22. If you say you're crazy, you're not crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah, because you're acknowledging <laughs> it. You're, yeah, because you know. Yes. You know like, you're aware. You're aware of the fact that something weird is going on in your head, and because you're aware of it, it's not real. Like, or it, it's, And you putting it out into the universe, right, and put, giving it to the world, I mean, it helps mend your pain, right? Very much so. I feel like I am a stronger man because I share my experiences. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, I don't know. I, 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 it was never a thought if I should or shouldn't share my stories. Um, one of the things that annoys me is that then after sharing your stories, people think that they own your privacy. Not the hmm. not uh, two don't go hand in hand. And, and those are two completely different things. Yeah. Uh, and we've actually had um, and and when uh, Mark, you got a little scared there, and uh, there was a bunch of people that started screaming at you and yeah. me, and then suddenly a, lot, a bunch of girls ran out of a bar, and we were like right in like a back entrance to the venue. Yeah. And I looked at Mark, and Mark looked at me, and Mark said like. I actually, for the first time, I got scared of our own fans because they, it was so wild. And, and it was like, but it's just music, baby. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. It's just a song, honey. But you also, you, you don't enjoy the fact that people idolize musicians. The fact that you put musicians on a platform and they're seen as something greater than what they are as just human beings. It's, it, it, it's so easy for parents to just tell their kids, oh, look at that guy or look at that girl, instead of the parents being the role model. Yes. But then again, we had unique parents in that sense. I mean, your father and your mother are really awesome. Mm. So are your father and your mother. And my mother and father were great. And we have, like, Stefano's mom, Miser. She's so awesome. Like, we've got all these great parents around us. Yeah. And, and then you just realize that a lot of parents don't take their responsibility seriously enough. And even if they do, they end up maybe not. And, of course, I'm so jaded because I just had a little daughter of and course. everyone listening to this interview who had children of their own will say you're going to find out how difficult it is which I will yeah, <laughs> it's coming and which I already have within the first nine weeks yeah so uh, uh, half of what I'm saying is also just from my personal experience I've seen a lot of selfish parents and you just cannot put yourself before the child but and how do you, okay so how do you prepare I mean look at your life right now look at your career Lucas Graham is everything, right? You, you you say it in a ton of songs. We just talked about it before. Lucas, you, you are the brand, right? It does fall on your shoulders. It's a very selfish profession Yes, that you're in. That's why I took seven weeks paternity leave. I yeah. was home two weeks before the birth and five weeks after. And then we had a bunch of promo stuff we had to do in Europe. We were nominated for four EMAs. And <laughs> Pretty crazy. And yeah, it's, it's, it's very weird. <laughs> we haven't even gotten to that side yet. I mean, no, yeah. and then, then you, I flew back home to Denmark when the other guys flew to, uh, to New York. Then suddenly I'm on a first class ticket with my baby and my girlfriend <laughs> on my way to New York to perform at Seth Meyers. And, uh, and like, Amazing. And everyone's worried about this whole election with Hillary and Trump. It's and crazy, we were, isn't it? We were it? in uh, New York for election day. And all I could think of is, 
well, it's only four years. I have another 18 until this. It's even plausible that she's out of my life. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, it's only four years or eight. I have 20 or maybe 25 before yeah. this little girl can even take care of herself. <laughs> like I have a fetus for the next 18 years. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're responsible for everything she ever does. But that's, I mean, that, that's a set of responsibilities. I'm also responsible to who she meets through yeah. me and us. And mm -hmm. uh, what music do we listen to? What do we talk about? Do we read books? Do we read comics? Do we read fairy tales? Or like, are we watching movies? Does she just get the iPad all the time? So many questions. Suddenly you notice, oh, someone left this little plant thing here I'll put it up on a high table because we can't have that lying around yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's really weird like you start automatically I'd like just move my uh, my girlfriend's necklace when she's about to breastfeed because she'll grab the necklace and it's like, like things you just you do just without know. Yeah. you just do it mm -hmm. and I, I'm very very positively surprised about how much of it comes naturally how much is just oh that's just how you do it well, I think because it's you, right? You created it. It's your project. You well, know? it's like I've chosen to like you guys, and I, I we've chosen to to uh, have a nice conversation yes. rather than uh, dissing each other all day. Yeah. <laughs> Suddenly, this thing arrives, and you have no control over the amount of love that you feel. It's just there, and that is a strange thing. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I want to get a puppy and try to mimic the feeling, but I don't even know if that's remotely close. I, I think it's the exact same thing you'll get with the puppy. The difference is the puppy never grows up. That's and, it. And, mm -hmm. and that's the problem. Yeah, that's wise words. How's, how's the lady taking it all? Is she good? She's a trooper. Yeah, she's a hero. Are we, she, she's definitely a hero. And I, I, I think women gen, in general are just way stronger than mm -hmm. men. Yeah. I think every, <laughs> yes. every 16 year old boy who has some macho. Uh, disorder in his head should just see a woman give birth oh yes. god <laughs> that's scary <laughs> change everything no but it's not even it i would say it's way more awe-inspiring than yes. scary it's way more just you just realize that i am the weak sex <laughs> i can i can supply food i can supply semen and then i'm done <laughs> that's it <laughs> and then i can facilitate security that's the three things we can do and other than that we're just selfish things yeah. and how did how did your mom take all of this is your mom involved our oh, mom is involved well yeah. mom is at home now mom is a, is a school teacher for special needs kids back home so uh She's mom, busy. mom is not on the road unfortunately but uh i don't think she would want to be on the road i think she likes being at home how do you explain your success to her like do you remember one of the first conversations you ever had with her where you kind of had to sit her down and explain this is my life. This is the new norm. I dropped out of law school when I was a couple, like in the early twenties, and uh, and because I'd gotten a record deal, and she was basically sobbing, going, "But you can't trust these people." <laughs> and I said, "No, but then we'll just have to kill them." <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. I mean, <clears throat> you're going to be I'll, a lawyer. You can get yourself out of it. Of course, I could. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't think parents, just like your own mom. Yeah, I think especially mothers have a difficulty in 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 understanding their children's success in a in a commercial fashion because mothers want their children to be happy that's it mm -hmm. so if you're happy you're successful I, I i don't think my mom sees my success being any different than than my my big older sister getting her master's degree in like english literature and culture with specifically like assimilation and immigration yeah <laughs> like and my, exactly. little, my younger sister <laughs> is a is like a working as a waitress and she loves that and and i think to my mom we're equally successful we all have a partner we all have our, an apartment of our own like happiness is there of ourselves yeah wow okay i you know back to the music sack yeah because you're about to be nominated for a grammy what i think so in four days we'll know i know are we nervous how are we feeling i would say that it, it, that's the biggest. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's the biggest thing we can achieve in some way. It's peers voting for peers. Like you have to have released music in America within the last five years to nominate other people for Grammys and vote for other people's being, like. It's it's everybody bonding together, and you feel and I feel that your music cuts through right in a huge way. But we're a very very small fish in a very big sea. And you have to acknowledge mm -hmm. that because you got to be realistic when you go into stuff like this, right? And you also don't want to be the arrogant guy who then gets completely uh, depressed when you don't get <laughs> nominated. That's exactly <laughs> it. Zach will be that guy for you because he'll be so depressed no, if you don't get nominated. I'll be very, yeah. uh, I'll be <laughs> very be upset. Yeah. Because, you know, we, uh, we had an artist in here yesterday and we were talking about you guys. And they go, you know, I saw them perform live and I was amazed because their live performance sounded exactly like their album. And I said, no shit. 
That's <laughs> called music. Okay, that's called musicianship. That's called like through and through, raw and genuine. And it like it, it, it it's it's right, you know? That's what you want. That's that in my mind should be the ultimate goal, right? I mean, the three of us together, we've got 60 years of musical experience and none of, none of us are 30 yet. That's it's wow. nice. No. Well, can you because you all grew up together? No. We went to the same high school, so okay. we were 16. When we met first, yeah. 2005, mm -hmm. and you were got into school 2006. Yeah. And then you dropped dropped out. Did you have a few drinks yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> I did, yeah. <laughs> With me, by any chance? <laughs> well, see, I'm used to not getting any sleep by now. So having drinks, five hours of sleep, and going to work obviously hurts people without children more than... <laughs> yeah, and obviously, you're, are you, have you become the dad of the group? Because at the Will Turn, when the show's over, they're rolling in the beers. You know what I mean? It's a party. It, was, it mm -hmm. deserved to be celebrated, obviously. Yeah. We but, celebrated, yeah. But uh, I am very much the dad in the group. Uh, I've we've ha I've had a, a separate bus for the family, basically. So we have that's like, great. I don't want to be responsible for them not being able to have a FIFA tournament on the Xbox yeah. or or drink <laughs> beers until four in the morning. Just because I have a baby doesn't mm -hmm. mean their lifestyle has to change. That's you're a good friend and a good partner. Mm. Seriously, no, it's a bit of also. Should my fiance sit and like get up in the morning in her no. underwear and sit in the middle of the bus lounge? I Never. Mean, yeah. like, you're a good partner to them and to her you and just, your baby. I think it's very much about respecting each other's boundaries, and we've been good at that in this band all all along. Definitely. And and. A, ba a baby could ruin that, like if you were obnoxious enough about it. Are you able to respect each other's boundaries because you, at the end of the day, realize what each and every one of you actually brings to this puzzle to put it together, right? Because you know what Lucas brings, mm. like, like y you know what Mark brings, mm. y like you get it, like y you understand. You guys are on the same page. You can't do it. Do you think you could do it without them? No. See. And even if I could, I don't think I'd like to. Yeah. Mm. I see all these solo artists, uh, especially younger solo performers. And they look a little tired because yeah. there's so, I feel um, immense pressure on me. I mean, yeah. I had one world hit, <laughs> but I've got these guys mm -hmm. and I've got two managers. I've got a wonderful production and writing team behind me and I've got a wonderful family. I've got wonderful friends, wonderful companions on this road. And being alone is just so hard. We're not meant to do anything on our own. We're, we're flock animals. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. That's beautiful. It's the truth. But you have to weed out the crap to get to the right people, no? Oh, yeah. Oh, most definitely so. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how's the last year been overall? Has it been stressful or has it been rewarding? But you can't have the reward without the stress because it's been a, it's, it's a life-changing year. Besides the baby, mm -hmm. career now, and music. I mean, holy shit. How's your, how do you take it all? I mean, it's been stressful. Definitely, like the most crazy year in our life so far. But it's far. as if everyone wants to be stressed, want to be busy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're not busy right now. We will be like when we have to leave and someone's like, oh, we're late. And you're like, oh, could you have told us that five minutes ago? <laughs> <laughs> but we're not busy now. I mean, we're just hanging out. We're with, just chilling. With Zach. <laughs> Thanks for coming in, by the way. M much appreciated. Um, okay. I want to know right now, I got a list of questions here. All formulated, out of my mind, from your songs, but first to you. Well, I know you have stuff. Do you guys ever lose, like, your songs have so much meaning, and the more you perform them, does, does the meaning ever go away? Does it, does it become a routine? Quite the contrary. Um, you have a good point, Mark, that you, that you often insist on making, like, an intro or an outro or, like, l make songs go into each other whenever they start getting a little boring. Mm. And I feel that's been a big part of of especially this tour because we almost burnt out just before my paternity leave i would say <laughs> we toured november december january february march april may june july august and then we got off the 10th of september so we had almost 10 months where we didn't see home um and then when we went back on tour we went back on tour with new arrangements and it was just wow yeah that was very really important because you know, we are playing like seven years all the time in the promo, like in the studios. Yeah. And, uh, like we never play seven years in a sound check. No, because <laughs> of course we're a little bit tired of playing it. Of course. Song. But <laughs> once you're performing it in a radio session or yeah. live with the audience, you can just, you find a person in the audience and you latch on to that person's emotion. And yeah. then kind of, isn't like while exactly. the song is playing, you kind of think, What's your story? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's amazing. It's, it's like your story, honey. You're crying on the fourth row with the, the pigtails, 
and uh, and your friend next to you is not so she's obviously not your sister <laughs> <laughs> like are you building a backstory for this girl like what, what the what? person in the audience Sometimes. yes but no i think you could do more than me because i have yeah. to sing the lyrics yeah. Yeah. yeah i can just sit there and just watch the the audience and that's amazing but it's really the audience that makes the music yeah. come alive at, oh, the, yeah. at the shows yeah. and the fact that it's everybody right so being at the will turn and seeing the collection of people of all walks of life of all ages yes. 60 year olds it was amazing but also singing lyrics from songs that aren't on the radio yes and that's what i find fascinating about our american audience mm -hmm. because they sing everything they sang yeah. the entire album start yeah. to finish and the songs we haven't released yet yes which you, is weird. Do you want great. do you want people to read into your lyrics, or do you want it to be surface level only? Oh, I love when people read them because if if everybody read the lyrics to say "Happy Home," I don't think a single person <sighs> would stop me on the street and ask for a selfie. Huh. I don't know about that. <laughs> I maybe it's just my life and what I brought to that song. And I've, I over the last maybe seventy two hours, I've uh, really soaked in the song a lot. I don't know. Maybe because I I understood that struggle. I I I understood what you were going through when you were writing it, and and the changes, and uh, that that to me that song resonated. I I don't see you as an arrogant asshole. I see you as somebody who's acknowledging their reality and trying to figure out how they exist within it now, right? I think I'm just a very very shy but very very extrovert person. Yes. Um. It's not that I don't want to talk to people. It's just that I'm trying to guard myself in a certain way because. I mean, we, when we performed in Portland uh, in in the in the spring, uh, late winter, early spring, this girl came up to me and she was crying her eyes out, and she had these shirts with her to get autographed. And her oldest sister, had, who was a needle junkie, had been by and dropped her kids off at this girl, the younger girl's house, because mm -hmm. she couldn't take care of them. So this girl of 21 is picking up autographed stuff for a little boy and a little girl whose mom and dad won't take care of them because they'd rather do drugs <sighs> and um and and basically she, like the kids introduced their aunt to seven years and mama said and mm. and I, I i'm dying just telling this story uh. because it was it was so surreal that i wrote a song that helped uh, an eight-year-old boy understand like that his mom loves him even though it doesn't feel like that all the time <laughs> Like I was broken and I went, I remember we went into the bus and I, I couldn't fall asleep. I couldn't calm down. I was just, I wanted to meet these kids. Like I wanted to do something, but you can't. No. Like you can, like you, I love the Michael Jackson song, Heal the World, Make It a Better Place. But you have to start in your old household. You start, you mm -hmm. need to start by healing your own family. And then what we do on stage is we spread all this love and it's great, but it's a little tough sometimes to have that like i i obviously have this little cord that i can just plug into other people's hearts and it's not only them feeling what i'm saying i feel it back again yeah. it, you know what i mean yes I do. That's amazing. It's empathy, right? It's a little bit of empathy, but it's also understanding your it's story. It's also like sociopathic. But but i don't think it does. I i think that story and having that kid be able to listen to that song and have his life be changed and look at his mom in a different way, it shows the power of music. And it shows the healing power of what your lyrics and what your story can bring to somebody else. Because art is in the eyes of the beholder. Oh yeah, totally. Music is art. Music, mm -hmm. It's but in I mean, the ears if, of the beholder. If every Olympic discipline was like music... Oh, okay, so Sack ran the 800 meters the fastest, Yeah. but Magnus ran them more beautifully. <laughs> I mean, I style <laughs> and, um, but but love stick is going to get the gold medal because he has the backing of the public yeah <laughs> like <laughs> i mean it's so like you can't like there's you can't you can't win no there's no winner yeah but no but it's just fun it's just funny when you look at it like that but but maybe there is a winner because maybe in that moment you brought healing to this kid right you gave him oh, understanding totally. well at the end of the day happiness is about enjoying less and less and less not needing more and more and more yeah mm -hmm. so like i i i hold on to those little stories instead of the comment on uh, instagram about uh, oh you look fat in that shirt and you're like thanks man thanks because i'm really not trying to look ripped <laughs> <laughs> what makes this all worth it for you is it that moment i think it's that moment right before and right after we go on stage because being on stage seems like an hour and a, and a million years but it also feels like oof. Mm -hmm. We have these little, like we huddle before we go on stage, like the silence before the storm. 
but it's hard to to say what's the moment. I don't know. I mean, we, we're like, touring America. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what we dreamed of as boys. Yeah. How, do you, how do you guys stay out of the media so much if you're touring and you're out, you're doing all these things? Well, we just don't do a lot of interviews. There you go. <laughs> That's it. All right. And, uh, and yeah. when you do them, they're impactful and they're real. Well, we, we, we like to talk about music yeah. and we like to, to perform music and we like to touch people. Not in an inappropriate way, Zach. Yeah. <laughs> I was hoping. <laughs> I was hoping. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. At home, um, they're starting to be really, really annoyed with us that we speak with American media and not with Danish media. But it's like, we don't need to speak to the Danish media because... If they know you there. And the internet's an amazing thing. Everyone's connected. And I do I do one big interview with one newspaper a year, the newspaper my mom reads. Yeah. I do a big, <laughs> massive centerfold <laughs> piece every year. And, and it's, so it's like... America's just so much bigger. You have to do interviews. Yeah. You have to go out and, and, and talk to the people who are playing your music on the radio because there's so many people in this country. Yeah. And if, if we want people to listen to our songs, we're going to have to tell our story. I, I mean, no one, no one, if I'm not fighting for us, who's going to fight for us? Nobody. Nobody. Yeah, exactly. What do you look forward to in 2017? Well, first of all, the rest of our American tour. It's yeah. going to be huge. Our first yeah. big European tour. Mm -hmm. Nice. Lots of things to look a forward to. A lot of things. Well, I have, yeah. my, I, have, I, have, I have to celebrate a one-year birthday for my daughter. That, oh, that's going to be nice. right. That's going to be fun. Well, it's, I, I, yeah. I, I don't... Writing do, new do songs. They know, do they know that they have a birthday? I, mean, I, yeah. I don't know. I, maybe. But well, you're going to want the picture. It. There's going to have to be a cupcake or a cake with a candle and <laughs> yeah. stuff. You're going to have to document it. But yeah, new songs, definitely. Yeah, new songs. We've got a bunch of new songs already, and we have some time blocked off in the autumn to have, to have, in 2017 to... Uh, start Recording, yeah. writing more music and oh, I've never been more excited for a new set of songs because your <laughs> your music obviously follows your life and I'm excited to hear how the birth of your child and everything plays into it all. I promise it won't be an album full of lullabies <laughs> and songs about my daughter. That'd be awesome, actually. I wouldn't but, hate that. But I think it's a, you're going to look at life very interesting. You have a very interesting life, and I, I'm very looking forward to hearing it come through in your music. Seriously, it's, it, it's kind of different uh, different universes. Being a dad and obviously living with these guys and being on the road and partying and still having a, a, a a growing evolving music career well it's also just we we were at home i was on paternity leave and i went over to the to the kiosk to pick up some some apples for my my dear one at home she was eating a lot of apples <laughs> 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 and uh, we had we this the baby just been born um like i don't know if she's a week or two old and i go outside there's all these cops and i realized oh, my boy just got shot oh. so it's like all these things going on like he uh, uh, luckily only in the leg only and only getting shot is a big yeah. deal. But Luckily. He, but I mean, so all these things are happening. Uh, so so I'm, I'm definitely going to, like, uh, this thread of the Criminal Mind songs is definitely going to keep going because I have my guys and my boys back home still doing a lot of dirt. Um, and I have all my great family and I have my wonderful band. And so it's like there's all these highs and uh, all these lows. And it's... Do you feel like you've left those friends behind? Oh, yes. Does that hurt you? Oh yeah. How often do you think about it? I think about it like you get this a message once in a while from a guy or I get a phone call from a number I don't know and then it's one of the guys who's gotten a cell phone smuggled into prison and is calling me and is like, oh, how are you doing in America? And you're like, how are you doing in prison? Uh, <laughs> that's it's a hard just, reality. But it's reality yeah. for a lot of people that there's torn between where they're from and where they're going. And how do you, do you feel like you play a role in where they're going? I don't know. It's as if I, I like, I, I get the biggest compliments from my, my criminal friends. <laughs> That's, those are the guys like, hey, hearing your songs on the radio really meant something. Like, and you know it's well, true. Well, it gives them hope. Yeah, well, they're listening to somebody they know who made it out, yeah. who's doing something with their life. And on that note, we have to end. Well, I have one more quick question. I know yeah. they're wrapping us up, but how hard is it for you to release and watch back the You're Not There lyric video just seeing your dad disappear mm -hmm. every picture? Yeah, that was really awkward. Um, that was one of those moments where I actually sent it to my mom and my sisters just to have them confirm that we were allowed to use this lyric video because I just would rather be t a little too personal t and get the point across rather than try and hide behind an artsy music video only. Because at the end of the day, the reason why people are listening to our songs is because they're real. And the reason why 
there's a lot of music nowadays that I don't listen to is because at least it doesn't feel real, even though it might be as real for them who are making that as what I'm doing is for me. Um, but yeah, that is um, that was a tough one, and I don't ever look at it. Wow. Oh. Right. Lucas Graham, you're not there as a current single. I'm hoping in a few days we get some good Grammy news. Mm. <laughs> if I, I'm the sending next you the round is vibes. on you. That's <laughs> done. <laughs> I, I thank you. You just jinxed it. Now we don't get no, nominated. I'm knocking Ooh, on wood yeah. here. <laughs> this, is, this, no. is, this is plastic. What is this? No. <laughs> in Denmark, we say seven nine thirteen. What is that? That's a that's a knock on wood. Seven nine thirteen. Seven nine thirteen. Suit needs hard. Mm. Lucas Graham, always the greatest <laughs> honor in the world. Mm. The best conversations. I thank you one more time for making my mom feel like a million dollars the other day. <laughs> and not- we can always have a, a follow up to this little conversation in February when oh, we're yeah. back for Grammy Week. There we I, go. Absolutely. Nomination or no nomination. I would love nothing more. Lucas Graham, everybody, give it up. <laughs> All right. Come on. We'll bring instruments next time. Yeah, yeah right? Yeah. <laughs> Please.